Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial for Montana's hybrid carp fly. Whenever I think about go-to fly patterns, some quickly come to mind. I'm thinking about the Adams for dry flies, the pheasant tail, hare's ear, copper john for nymphs. I'm thinking about the woolly bugger, the clouser minnow, I think you get my drift. Whenever I'm talking about carp flies, this is the number one pattern that really just seems to be that go-to fly for so many fly fishermen out there. In fact, on one of my favorite websites, which is flycarpin.com, it's just a great website with lots of information related to fly fishing for carp, there was a recent poll and this fly was voted number one. There were some of the other industry standard flies that came in directly behind it, but this fly just always seems to rise at the top of the list for two main reasons. Number one, it's easy to tie and there are very few materials. Number two, it catches lots of carp. Well, this fly was created by John Montana. He runs an absolute great carp website, which is called Carp on the Fly. It's a blog, and even if you're not a carp fly fisherman, I suggest you check it out because there are some really great reads there. Whenever I was going through some of John's posts related to this pattern, I noticed that there's some characteristics that he uses that I didn't notice in some of the other videos out there related to this fly. For starters, John uses really light eyes. Not the color, but the weight. Second, for the body, he uses this hairline ice dub chenille, which is different than some of the other materials I saw in other videos of Montana's hybrid carp fly. So I want to mention that to you off the bat. I absolutely love variations. In fact, I'll be sharing some today and some additional suggestions for this pattern. But I just want you to be aware that John's original pattern is a little bit different than some of the others that I see out there. Aside from the tying of this pattern, most importantly, we have to talk about how to fish it. Whenever you talk about carp flies, I think a lot of carp fly fishermen get into this and they think that this is similar to bass fishing, maybe striper fishing, that you have this fly that looks similar to a jig because it's got these lead eyes or these dumbbell eyes and it's going to really just undulate on its way back to you. And that's true. However, this is not a fly that I recommend stripping really fast. In fact, this is one that I recommend casting out and just slowly retrieving it back. That seems to be probably the most effective way to fish it, and I highly suggest that you try that method first. Well, with all that said, what I'm going to do next is show you a picture of the finished fly, list all the tying materials, and then finally get, in, get into the tying procedures for this great carp fly called Montana's Hybrid Carp Fly. All right, let's get started tying the Montana's hybrid carp fly. In my Stonfo Cayman Vice, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. This is part of their carp series of hooks. This one's the S201 slash C103. Sometimes you'll see the H designation after that, which stands for heavy, meaning it's a heavier wire. I'm tying this pattern in a size three, though I will tie it about two sizes larger than that and two sizes smaller. I'm gonna be using ADOT Uni Thread, the color's black. You can definitely get away with 6 aught thread too. After building a little bit of a base, I'm going to add my eyes. These are eyes from a bead chain. They are a little bit smaller than I would typically add on a hook of this size. It's recommended that way from John. He, he wants just a little less weight at the front. Even though I'm using eight odd, I don't have to worry about too many thread wraps because these bead chain eyes will stay in place. When adding those bead chain eyes in, you have a lot of color combinations and a lot of options just right off the bat. I'm using this black. It's more of a muted look. It's not completely dull, but it doesn't have a really high shine to it. Sometimes you may want to get something with a little bit more shine. There's a black nickel. And then finally, if you're fishing really murky water, some stained water, I can, I'd consider adding some fluorescent colors. That's something that I don't add too often whenever I'm fishing carp patterns. However, if you do fish fluorescent beads at the front of your fly, please uh, make some comments uh, down below this video and let others know about your experiences because I haven't really had a lot with these and I'd love to hear if you have. Next, we're going to be adding in the, this tail slash larva section of the pattern. The material that's typically used is ultra chenille and the color is red. So this is the common one that you'll see. I also love to add this 
light olive in. I think that has just a great look to it. And then occasionally I'll even add this chartreuse in. I really have had lots of luck over the years with chartreuse and black as a color combination in warm water, I guess warm water, warm water such as lakes and slow moving rivers. And I really recommend trying this again, especially in stained colored water. Here's an example of one of these Montana's hybrid carp patterns with that chartreuse tail, the black, this chenille body, and then finally a little bit of olive hackle at the front. And in this case, I have those nickel eyes, which again, just kind of give it a little bit more shine whenever it's in the water, especially in that stained or murky water. Well, back to this pattern. Today, I'm going to be tying in ultra chenille, but the color is going to be this light pink. I'm going for more of that muted look, but I still like that color combination that I get from this light pink larva or worm section coming out the back and that black chenille body. So I'm going to add this at the front. And I want to wrap it down the bend, well, maybe a quarter of the way there. I really have to remember that because I'm fishing bead chains and they're on the top of the shank, this fly is going to be riding hook point up. Thus, I want to kind of help this larva and help this material shoot up so that I, that fish can see this piece in the water. I'm going to leave it long for now and I'll come back to that and I'll return to that at the end of the fly. For the body material, John has recommended hairline ice dub chenille. That's a great material, though I've had a lot of success with this sparkling material over the years. This is called Willie's Sparkling Fly Tying Material. There's a package of olive, and I'm going to be using black today. What I love about this material from Willie is the fact that it has all these long strands, and you can trim them to the length that you want. It's a very reasonably priced material. I'm going to tie it in right along with that ultra chenille, and then wrap forward. I don't have to worry too much about it. It's going to lock in place pretty easily. If you're using a rotary vise, you can just employ that feature. I'm going to pretend that you're not, and I'll just trim this and wrap it forward. Every few wraps, I want to just kind of pull those fibers back to make sure that I'm not crowding them, allowing them to, to kind of take off and, in a sense, breathe. If you don't like those fibers being that long, you can easily trim those down, especially on the bottom of this pattern. Before tying off, I want to just make sure I can't see that pink showing through the body at all. Okay, then finally, for our last material, we're going to go with some hen hackle. There are, again, are just like all the other the points of this fly, though there's very few materials, you have some options for the colors. On that fly I just showed you, I had an olive, more of a lighter olive, and I also like fishing a dark olive. You can go with a, a badger look, you can go with a dyed look if you prefer some of those fluorescent colors. But getting back to that muted look, I'm going for this grizzly hen hackle. I think that has, this has some really nice colors to it. It's a little bit light, so whenever you're thinking about those those little hackles at the very end that could mimic insect legs, you can get that look from this pattern, but it still has enough dark in it to really just blend in with everything on the bottom. I'm going to pick out one that has a nice combination between those, that black and white. And I'll show you how I prep this feather. Here's the one I've selected. I'm just going to hold it by the tips and stroke the fibers down. And I'm going to use that that location as my tie-in point. And then I may make about two or three turns. I don't need a lot up here at the front. If my hackle starts moving forward, don't worry about, we, about that. We can kind of fix that at the very end. There we go. So now, before I put my, tie my thread off, I really want to make sure all these fibers are moving back. So I'm just going to hold the ones on the top back, wind back a few wraps, then do the same on the bottom. Once I'm sure I have all those hackles going in that direction, I'm just going to clean up my head a little bit, make sure I lock in all those little extra fibers, move forward, 
get a quick half hitch, and then whip finish. I'm going to add a little bit of head cement. In this case, it's going to be Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. This is the advanced. I'm going to put it on the thread Jasper style. Use my finger to make sure I have it distributed relatively equally. Get about five turns in there. Wipe off the excess. I'll get my thread out. And then finally, I'm going to return to this tail. I want this to be approximately twice as long as the body length. So I'm just going to eyeball it. There's one, and there's about the second. What's nice about leaving it long is that in the event you're on the water and you need to cut that shorter, you can easily do that. In this case, I prefer to leave it that length and then make the adjustments as necessary. With that said, there is a finished look at John Montana's hybrid carp fly. And I'll show you the one that I prefer during in the murky water. These are just really excellent patterns. Um, I suggest you trying these out, and please don't be afraid to come up with a few different color combinations of your own. More than likely, they're going to work. Um, the, the key being, fish this pattern back slowly. You don't want to spook those carp out of there. You want to catch those fish. And these are two patterns that will absolutely do that. Well, with that said, I really do appreciate you viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them directly on this page, or you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to view my other YouTube fly tying tutorials, you can do so at my website, which is troutandfeather.com, and you can also like me on Facebook. Thanks again, everyone, for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial on Montana's hybrid carp fly.